Most of the media and most Labour MPs have been happy to go along with Keir Starmer's draconian decision to block Jeremy Corbyn from re-standing as a Labour MP. There are exceptions, though. This was Barry Gardner on Newsnight. What's happened today is that the NEC has taken away the right of Islington North constituency to choose the candidate that they've chosen. I don't know for how many years, but it's... it's, it's decades. Yeah, decades. And, and he's... We understand from Nick Watt, no, he nobody, hasn't yet nobody decided, saying, Jeremy right. Corbyn, whether to run as an independent. Yeah. What would your advice be to him? He must not. Look... I support the Labour Party and I will always support the Labour candidate. And I would urge anybody who is thinking of leaving our party to stay because we need a party that has vibrant debate. We need a party where we disagree respectfully. We need a party that is an open social democratic party because if it's that, it will be stronger. We'll go on and we can win that election. But it's about putting a vision forward. And of course, that vision is stronger if we debate it. Keir Starmer has put forward the five missions. I want to get behind them. I want to ensure that we win the next election. And I want to do that on the basis of attacking the Tories, not attacking each other. He expects to wield too much control over the party, comparing Keir Starmer, say, with Tony Blair. Look, I, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, make any um, adverse comparisons. What I want is I want a party that is clear that rules must be obeyed, There are penalties if you don't, but then the process must be fair, it must be due process, and it must be followed. Because that way, people know that they're not under a climate of fear. They're not, they're not worried about whether some group within the party might think, oh, these people are not in, Lastly, in the best interest just of, to wind, to, of just us to as an electoral machine. wind this up because we need to go to Paris. But uh, is it not the case that if he had c- continued as a Labour Party candidate, Jeremy Corbyn would have been pursued by people throughout the campaign on this anti-Semitism issue? He would have refused to apologise as he has all the way up to now, and that would have been a dis- distraction from the Labour victory you would wish to see. Well, that may be your view, and it may be many people's view. But the point is this, there are rules, they need to be followed. If they're broken, there need to be consequences. That's the way of doing things decently and fairly, and it has not been done in this case. It's really sad how radical that sounded, right? You've got an MP saying, actually, I think due process matters. And it's interesting that it's the MP who says due process matters that actually gets a harder interview. All the other MPs who go on and say, oh yeah, of course, it was great to kick Corbyn out. You you don't get them being really grilled by these hosts saying, I mean, what rule was followed here? Is is this safe in a democracy to have a leader who can just stop people standing because he decides on a whim that it would be against the interests of the party to do so? Don't you have rules that should be followed? That would seem to me sort of the normal um, questioning from a journalist. I mean, obviously in that situation, it's, it, it's fine. You often take the opposite opinion to the person you're interviewing. That's an interviewing style, fine. But I'm not seeing the same thing directed at the likes of Wes Treating and Ed Miliband when they say, oh yeah, rules are rules, rules schmalls, you know, this guy shouldn't be standing. And then all the hosts are like, oh yeah, of course, good, good. Oh, yeah, this is good. Could Keir Starmer go even further? I mean, that seems to me to be the tenor of coverage of this. Um, I said the media have mostly gone along with this, not all though, and this is not quite a defence of Corbyn, what we're going to show you now, but in terms of the mainstream media, Lewis Goodall is the only person, I think, to recognise Keir Starmer's behaviour has been questionable at best. Team Starmer's view of this is that they can convince the public, as you say, that the party has changed by using Corbyn and the left to every conceivable opportunity beat them with the biggest stick that they can. And this isn't, Corbyn is the most visible manifestation of this, but at every level of the party, I mean, it's it's hard to, it's easy to forget now the extent to which Starmer ran. I mean, I was in the, you know, in the room when he launched his campaign in Manchester back in 2020, and his whole appeal then was as a sort of bridging candidate, a more centrist part, candidate of the party within the Labour Party. So his line would be, let's not trash the last Labour government and let's not trash the last four years under Corbyn. Well, my word, we have moved so far from that in that time. The Labour left knew this was coming. I mean, I remember speaking to someone from the Labour left during that leadership campaign and saying to them, well, would Starmer be such like a bad outcome for you? You know, he signed up to all of these pledges, these Corbynite pledges. Uh, he's, you know, he's saying the right things as far as you're concerned. The mood music is pretty good, pretty conciliatory. And they were like, no, no, you don't understand. We'll be out. 
will be out straight away. They knew that this purge was coming. And if you look across the sort of hierarchy of the Labour Party, the different bits of the Labour Party, it has been purge by purge by purge, whether it's on the National Executive Committee itself, which used to be controlled by the left. Look at parliamentary selections which have gone on. In the 100 most winnable seats of the Labour Party, only two have been from the left. The Starmer leadership has exercised an iron grip on parliamentary selections. So this, in a way, the Corbyn stuff is the most visible manifestation of this. But there is no doubt that the Starmer leadership has been, in a way that is completely different, we've talked about before, John, to say how the Biden approach has been, which has been to embrace not only the sort of much of the ideology of the left, but many of the key figures. We had Bernie Sanders in this studio talking about exactly that. The Starmer approach has been to purge. And that is one of the reasons why it has generated such anger from so many parts um, of the left. That was good journalism, right? He was actually talking about what was going on. Now, it doesn't matter. He doesn't need to stand up and say, this is an outrage that Keir Starmer has done this. But to call a spade a spade, this is a purge. And also to say this is not inevitable, right? Joe Biden did a very different thing. I think the comparison between Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden is very important here. Hillary Clinton, when she beat Bernie Sanders, what she did was basically call all of Bernie Sanders supporters sexists and sort of say this guy's an idiot right she lost joe biden when he beat bernie sanders he was like no this guy's got loads of really good ideas let's come together and talk about hashing out some policy practices and and lo and behold the joe biden presidency has been sort of more progressive than say obama for example because joe biden didn't just rerun the obama campaign the the inflation reduction act does invest some serious money in in in, in climate change for example um, so he, he is a very different president to Obama, whereas it seems to me that Keir Starmer just wants to be Tony Blair. And to me, that seems, it seems risky electorally. It also suggests that this is not going to be a particularly, I mean, radical government would be being overly, um, I mean, it's not just that it won't be a radical government. It seems like it's not going to be a particularly progressive government at all because they've expunged the left from the party and sort of denied the possibility. They don't have sort of the option now to sort of say, we're going to we're gonna win with a big tent coalition of the left and the centre. They are saying, no, we are a centrist party. The left aren't going to be batting for them, right? So they have to go now for the right and the media. That's their electoral strategy, which to me doesn't suggest, um, you know, that we're going to be pleasantly surprised when they get into power, as some people have been with Joe Biden. Um, we're also beginning um, to see debates emerge within the Labour left as to how Jeremy Corbyn should respond to being barred. John Landsman is the founder and former chair of Momentum. He's penned this for Labour list. Barring Corbyn is wholly unjustified, but I hope he won't stand as an independent. Now, in the text, um, he writes this, and this is on the decision to block Corbyn. So this is his take on Starmer's move. This is an act of factionally motivated victimisation. Keir Starmer may believe that it will play well with a section of the electorate, but it will play badly with others. In a first-past-the-post election, the Labour Party must appeal to a broad spectrum of voters, and that requires a broad range of politicians. Jeremy Corbyn certainly does not appeal to everyone, but he appeals strongly to some, to, to many in fact. He is a necessary and desirable part of Labour's coalition, so he's disagreeing with Keir Starmer. However, on how Corbyn should respond, he writes this. He could do as Tony Benn did to retire from Parliament at the next election to devote more time to politics. As a Labour Party member, and unlike Tony Benn, as a former Labour leader, he would continue to be able to speak out on anything he chooses and would have far greater weight than any backbench independent MP lucky enough to be elected would ever have. I very much hope that he follows Tony Benn's course of action rather than standing as an independent against the Labour Party when we all want a Labour government. I imagine that is what every socialist campaign group MP would like to do since apart from any other consideration, they wish to remain Labour MPs. And then it says the alternative is probably that thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of Labour Party members will be expelled for supporting an independent parliamentary candidate in Islington North. That, of course, is what members of the faction that Keir Starmer has put in charge of running the Labour Party on his watch are hoping for. Now, I know John Lansman. I, I respect John Lansman. I think he's a thoughtful guy. But I think this is a pretty misleading article in a way, because the options it's presenting aren't the only options. And the options it is presenting, I don't think, are being presented particularly honestly. Tony Benn retired on his own terms, right? He wasn't kicked out of the party. He wasn't booted out of the party. He decided to retire. It, it was a decision he made. Jeremy Corbyn is being kicked out of the party, essentially, or being kicked out of the PLP. So the idea that you just respond to that by saying, oh, okay, well, fair enough, I'll just retire now. It's not going to be understood in the popular press that this is a guy who, you know, in his prime, a very thoughtful guy retired. They're going to be like, this guy was kicked out of parliament in disgrace. That's how everyone talks about Jeremy Corbyn, right? And so I, I, I can see why 
Jeremy Corbyn is going to be listened more to as an independent backbench MP because he can say, look, Keir Starmer didn't like me, but the electorate, they do, right? I have a democratic mandate to be here. You might think I'm disgraced, but my constituents clearly disagree. And to me, that would give the guy quite a big mandate to speak because he, he will have caused a massive upset. That will be a pretty impressive election result if he is to beat the Labour candidate. Whereas if he just says, I, I resign now respectfully. I mean, John Lansman also says he could run for the NEC. I mean, I, I wouldn't put any faith in the Labour Party not to find an excuse to expel him if he wins election to the NEC, right? It doesn't seem like there are any lengths they won't go to to get this guy out. And I do think that if you've been, you know, if you've been subject to such a huge character assassination in the press, then you've, you want to show that the press don't matter that much. You can beat the smear, as it were, right? So I, I think there is a strong argument for him to stand. I also, and I suppose this is where potentially I, I agree with John Landsman in that I don't think the whole socialist campaign group, so that's the left-wing Labour MP, should come out and say, we back Jeremy Corbyn in Islington North, because then they would be expelled from the Labour Party. And I think the left would have next less influence in the next election, because I don't think all 30 of them would get elected, right? So I, I don't think they should all endorse Jeremy Corbyn, but they don't need to. And the example here is Ken Livingston. So Ken Livingston was essentially um, barred from standing as a, well, he, he wasn't barred, in fact. So he, he ran to be London's Labour mayor, um, in 2000. He wasn't the choice of Tony Blair. He did win the vote among members and among trade unions, but Tony Blair sort of whipped MPs to vote against him. So he lost that internal election. Ken Livingston said, look, this is a stitch up by Tony Blair. I'm going to stand as an independent, but I don't want the express support of any Labour MPs or even any Labour members because I don't want you guys to leave the Labour Party. I don't want you to get kicked out. I can do this on my own. All right? And obviously Jeremy Corbyn wouldn't have to do it on his own because there are enough people who've already left the Labour Party to campaign for him. So I, I think there is a Ken Livingston option, which is neither of what John Lansman has suggested. He seems to be suggesting he can retire like Tony Benn and sort of a, a very principled and be the sort of respected elder statesman, which I don't think is true, or he stands and completely spits the Labour Party. And I don't think that's true either, because I think there is this Ken Livingston option, which is, which is quite a positive one. Um, I, I want to go to a poll. This is favourability among Labour voters. Um, when it comes to Jeremy Corbyn. And as you can see here, of people who voted Labour in 2019, and over 50% of people in Islington North voted Labour in 2019, 43% have a favourable opinion of Jeremy Corbyn, 27% have an unfavourable opinion of Jeremy Corbyn. But that's not polling that suggests this guy would win the next general election if he were leader of the Labour Party, right? You need much higher support among Labour voters for that to happen, and you need higher support among some swing Conservative voters as well. But if what you're trying to do is win a constituency where you already have massive name recognition, and you're going to be competing with the Labour Party, not with the Conservatives, then to me, that seems like the kind of ratings which means he probably could beat the Labour Party in Islington North, right? I mean, presumably they're going to do some polling, I don't know. But you imagine that would be higher, that 43% favourability rating that he has among 29, 2019 sorry, Labour voters. I would imagine that's much higher in Islington North. You know, So I think he's got a chance of winning, and I, I wouldn't dissuade him from doing so.